We have convinced ourselves in our previous video that this bank of three single phase transformers is connected in a delta zigzag six connection. That is right. However, the triangle of phasors of voltages applied to the primary is not an equilateral triangle like the one shown. Observe. The tip of X1 is connected to phase A. Yes, the tip of X1, this one, is connected to phase A. That checks. And the tip of Z1 is connected to C1. Hmm. Yes, the tip of Z1 this one is connected to phase C. However, the tip of Y1 is not connected to B. Observe. The tip of Y1 is not connected to B. Instead, it is connected to a point that we have found out in the previous video is right in the middle between points B and C on the complex plane. In here, this is point M. What this means is that Y1 it's not connected to B as shown. Oh, no. It's connected to this point right in the middle. Point M. So the voltage in Y1 is going to be half the voltage it was before. That means that the voltage here in Y3 and in Y2 will not be 120 anymore, but half what it was. Now this voltage is 60 volts. And this voltage in Y2 is 60 volts as well, with the same phase, because the phase of the voltage in Y1 has not changed. But the tail of Y1 is also connected to M, so let's move it there. And we move this label also over here. Good. So what this signifies is that the voltage applied to coil X1 is not 15 kilovolts anymore. It's 15 times the cosine of 30 degrees, which is approximately 0.87. So that means that this voltage is approximately 87% of 15 volts, which means that the voltage in X2 and the voltage in X3 will not be 120 volts, will be approximately 87% of 120 volts. And the phase in X2 and the phase in X3 will also be as shown by the primary, 90 degrees will not be like that anymore. What about Z? Well, the voltage across coil Z1 is still 15 kilovolts with the same phase that hasn't changed. That means that voltages in Z2 and Z3 are 120 volts with the phases shown. Now let's adapt the secondary. This voltage X2 will have now this phase 90 degrees and will be shorter down to 87%. This one here, Z2, will not change. This one, Y2, will keep its phase, but will be only half as short, 60 volts. Good, 60 volts. And this one, well, this one continues to have the same phase, and this one needs also to be modified. There you go. This one needs to be connected here, and it has a length of only 60 volts, as we discussed before. This is a resulting phase or diagram of voltages in secondary and tertiary coils. Now, this is P. Observe the tail of X3. The tail of X3 is P. The tail of Y3. The tail of Y3 is Q and the tail of Z3 the tail of Z3 this one is R we still have to compute what are the voltages PQ that is one that we need to compute we need also to compute what is the voltage from Q to R and we need to compute what is the voltage between R and P. How do we do that? Easy. Observe. We have the voltages in each one of the coils X, Z, and Y. So the voltage from P to Q is just X3 minus Z2 plus X2 minus Y3. So you see some voltages, you add some voltages, you subtract, and that is going to be the voltage V. 
VPQ. Let me write it down. The voltage VPQ is going to be the voltage in X3 minus the one in Z2 plus X2 minus Z3. That's correct. So we add twice this voltage in X. Two times X3 minus Z2 minus Y3. That is that voltage. I'm using the name of the coils as a symbol to represent the fusorial voltage in the corresponding coil. Let's use a calculator to compute this one and the other two voltages. For x, that is going to be 120 times the cosine of 30. So 120, enter 30 degrees, make sure that you are in degrees, take the cosine of that, multiply. That is the magnitude of this voltage in x3 and in x2. The angle is 90 degrees. Absolutely, you're in polar. Make a complex number with that. That is that phasor x2 and x3 as well. We are we are okay there. Let's create uh, the phasor for y. y2 and y3, that is merely a real number, 60 volts. And what about the phasor for z2 and z3? That is 120 volts with 100 and 20 degrees negative and that is a complex number as well those are the voltages in x y and z allow me to store them in variables for recycling so the last one at the bottom is the voltage in z absolutely this is z enter store I have created that as a variable Z. And this is the one corresponding to coil Y. Hmm. Apostrophe, alpha Y, enter store, there. And this one is a voltage in coils X2 and X3. Apostrophe, alpha X, enter store. Those are the three voltages. Let's compute what we need to. Let's see. Two x's, this one and this one, minus z, minus y. Hmm. x, x, add them together, y, subtract, z, subtract. That is the voltage from P to Q, 312 volts with 90 degrees. This voltage, 312 volts with 90 degrees. What about this one? VQR. Well, VQR is Y negative X plus Y minus Z to the calculator. Two Y's. Absolutely. Y, Y. Add them together. Subtract X. Subtract Z. That is that voltage, 180 volts with zero degrees. This is this voltage here, right? This is VQR. VQR. 180 volts with zero degrees. I don't need to write an angle. That is a real number. And last, this voltage, RP, that is Z minus Y plus Z minus X. That is 2Z minus y minus x let's do that z z addition x subtraction y subtraction that is at voltage 360 volts with negative 120 degrees and i write v rp is 360 volts with negative 100 and 20 degrees and that is a solution to this exercise thank you very very much